Oh my God, I almost forgot to tell you guys about mulching. What kind of a gardener and friend would I be without telling you a little bit about the benefits, the practices of good mulching techniques? So we were already planting some potatoes. I got potatoes into the ground down over here. Uh, if I just move the soil back, you can tell I've got potatoes in the ground. But when I had planted the potatoes, the bed was looking a lot like this. Very few weeds and barren soil. And this is a no-no. You never, ever, ever wanna let your soil stay exposed. If this is your garden bed, it needs to be mulched. And if there's one thing that I teach you, if there's one takeaway from any of the stuff that you happen to pass by on my videos, it's good mulching techniques. Now, that's a rough chop. Now, I've just taken some wisteria branches and leaves and just placed it down on the ground. That's a rough chop and that'll do. What, what's the purpose of mulch? The purpose of mulch is just an organic material that's gonna protect the soil from the harmful effects of the UV radiation from the sun and the desiccation and, uh, and, and, um, and uh, the desiccation powers of the sun as well. What we're trying to do is maintain even a level of moisture and temperature in the soil. What plants don't like are heavy swings from hot to cold or from wet to dry. If you can moderate those swings, then you end up with healthier plants that transition from a wet to soil to a wet soil type to a dry soil type or from a hot to a cold a lot better. Anyways, that's a rough chop. But well, I've got a lot of material. I've got, I mean, if you look down on the floor and it looks like a pile of debris, right? Uh, this to me, in my opinion, is beautiful. This is what a lot of, the, this is what a lot of my landscape looks like after I've, I've come in with a pair of hand shears and um, cut back, opened up spaces for light to come in, um, opened up plants so that uh, I have better air flowing through them, reduction in things like powdery mildew and other diseases. But really, I've, I've got a ton of these plants. I have this wisteria right over here, and this is a pretty plant. We all know wisteria flows, throws these phenomenal grape-like clusters of purple flowers late in winter, and they're absolutely attractive. What a lot of people may not know about wisteria is that it's a nitrogen fixing plant. This is a vine that throws a pod, a bean within a pod. And henceforth it's legumous, which means that it's fixing nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen, the 70 plus odd percent of atmospheric nitrogen that's just floating above us. And it draws it into its leaves, draws it down into its roots. And I've planted this wisteria very close to my passiflora, the edulis. This is passiflora edulis. I have a couple flowers, a little late this year, but they're coming on. And every time I cut this plant, I'm able to derive a yield in terms of mulch. So I've got my mulch there. I can chop it into smaller bits and cover soil. But when I cut this plant, the plant roots are also tipped. I remove so many leaves from the plant and thus reducing the ability for this plant to photosynthesize, capture sunlight energy, photosynthesize, and store it down in the roots. Thus, part of the plant will naturally tip itself. And those roots decompose in the soil, on site, within, within the soil. Thus feeding microorganisms in the soil and enriching the tilth, the structure of my soil. So I'm fixing nitrogen in this zone. I'm, I'm feeding organic material into this area that's gonna help feed my passiflora. But I'm also harvesting green to protect the soil where I'm growing my beans. And that's one, that's one legumous plant in the garden. That's one what I call sacrificial lamb in my, in my garden. The other plant that I'm really excited about, and while I'm here, I might as well show you, whoa, 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 would be the Paraserianthes lophantha. This, my friends, is one of the most amazing trees for San Francisco, in my opinion. We've got a fast-growing nitrogen-fixing tree that is very wind-tolerant. Uh, it provides a phenomenal wind break. Privacy screening, because you can tell there's my neighbor's window right over there. My neighbors can't tell what I'm doing because I've got so much foliage in the back here. And this tree, if I can take a step back real quick, this tree is actually growing pretty tall. Every year before these plums that are growing near it um, flower out, 
I come up onto like usually the fence and with some loppers or my hand shears, I'll prune off branches. And if you take a look on the inside here, there are cuts all over this tree. I continually cut into this tree and I go up to the top of the canopy and I cut from the top of the canopy. And let me show you what I'm able to derive in terms of a yield off this tree. So just one branch gives me all of this mulch, which is protection for potatoes. I was planting some potatoes here. I just throw that down. It's a real rough chop. I'm doing this with one hand right now. And basically just to show you what I'm trying to do. What you're doing is you're cutting, especially if you can, pulling biomass off of a nitrogen fixing tree, bush, sub shrub, fava bean plant, and then you're mulching it. You're, you're covering the soil like you would with wood chips. This is what a lot of landscapers do at the end of a project. They, they top dress everything with wood chips. Well, those wood chips decompose, and after some time, you've got nothing protecting the soil because the wood chips have decomposed into your soil. What will you cover on top of those wood chips? Or what would you cover now on top of that bare soil? You have other plants. And you need those plants to continually reinvest into your soil. This is how you not only build soil fertility, but you maintain soil fertility. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I've definitely been doing a lot of these videos and if you have any feedback on how I'm doing or w w what I can talk about, um, if you have any interests that you'd like me to cover, let me know. Be happy to talk about them. All right guys, talk to you later, bye.